I'm Zachary Cartwright. This is Water and Food. Welcome to another episode of Water and Food. Today, my guest is Nadia Halaj from the food technology company Mori, located in Boston, Massachusetts. Mori is known as being in the anti-waste company specializing in keeping food fresher for longer by using nature-inspired protection for all kinds of foods. Specifically, they're using a protein found in silk to create a protective layer that is invisible to the senses. Once applied, this coating extends shelf life by keeping water in foods to slow dehydration, keeping air out of foods to keep nutrients and vitamins at their best, and also by making it difficult for microorganisms to grow. Let's learn about how Mori is able to better understand the effectiveness of their water-based protective layer using water activity measurements and moisture sorption isotherms in this episode of Water and Food. Hi, Nadia. Welcome to the show. Hi, Zachary. Thanks for having me. Of course. How, how are you today? Pretty good. Excited for the holiday. <laughs> yeah, just, just around the corner. Uh, things are definitely picking up and uh, th- things are always busy at the end of the year, I feel. How, how are of things course. there at Mori? Are, are things busy? They're pretty good. Yeah, we're in the process actually of moving to a new location. So we've done a lot this year. We're up to almost 60 employees. So we need larger lab spaces, um, but we'll still be in Charlestown, Massachusetts, which is good. And what's your role there at Mori? How, how long have you been there and, and what do you do there? Yeah, so I've been at Mori almost three years. Um, I started off as a research associate on our material science team, but have since transferred into our product team. Um, so I'm currently a product development manager on our confectionery and snacking team. So specialize in a lot of our consumer packaged goods that we work on, but I've had experience with some other food items since I started when the company was still pretty small. And what's your company known for? When, when somebody looks at Mori, what, what can they expect to find? So Mori uses nature-inspired protection for all kinds of food. So we use a natural protein we isolate from silk called silk fibroin, and we're able to extend the shelf life and the window of peak freshness on foods ranging from whole and cut produce to meats and also consumer packaged good items such as meal bars or hard candy. Um, Extending the shelf life of CPG items enables more sustainable packaging systems. And so by switching to recyclable, compostable, or ideally no packaging materials, Mori's technology can also help to reduce the amount of trash produced in the industry. So looking to minimize trash, food waste, um, and it can even help with different shipping challenges. And I I was trying to find online, where did this name Mori come from? Does it have a a background? Does it relate to your products or, you know, is it named after a founder? Where where does Mori originate (laughs) from? Good question. So the name Bombix Mori is the Latin name for the silkworms that a lot of people would think of when they think of silk. Um, so the silkworms that we use are the same exact silkworms that people use in the textile industry. So we start off with that silkworm cocoon that a worm would weave to protect itself during its most vulnerable stage of life. We take that from nature and we use the protein in silk to help create a protective layer that's invisible to the senses um, and can keep food fresher. So are you growing these silkworms or do you get this from somewhere else or, or what does that process look like for um, your team? That's a good question. So we're still in the process of figuring out ultimately where we would source this from. Mm -hmm. But right now in the textile industry, there's a lot of silkworm cocoon waste. So in the industry, to get the finest quality silk, they really want to use intact silkworm strands. Um, Whereas for us, since we end up breaking it down, we don't need the fibroin all in one piece. So right now we're getting it from textile industry waste. And is this something that you get within the U.S. or, or do you kind of look all over to, to get these, um, you know, products so that you can use them to create your own? Looking all over right now. Mm-hmm. So still narrowing down where ultimately we'll be sourcing it from. Um, but sericulture is pretty big across the world. So in Brazil, India, China, Japan, um, people have been doing this for a really long time. And then you're taking this coating and, and it's adding a, like a protective layer to your foods. How, how does this work? How does it extend the shelf life? Uh, what, what types of foods are you using and, and what are some of the successes that you're seeing by using this product? Yeah, so what's really nice about the silk fibroin is when it's applied to the surface of a food item, it forms a film coating. And so this film has all types of barrier properties. So it can slow down the rate of moisture migration, which can help keep water either in or out of food, depending on the application. It has oxygen barrier properties. Um, it can block ethylene. Um, it also makes it difficult for things like bacteria, yeast, or mold to grow. And what are some of the, the challenges that your clients face? So why would someone come to you? What, what challenges do you hear 
and then you know that y- your coating is is the right fit for that food. Yeah, so pretty much I like to think as long as it can adhere to the surface, it can help. Mm-hmm. Um, and so a lot of it is the shelf life. Um, so really just being able to keep things, you know, in storage for longer or ideally if things can stay fresher at a lower temperature and you don't need cold storage um, for as often during the process um, as you would without the coating. Things like that are pretty important. Um, But then, for example, if something is really moisture sensitive, so something I work on a lot is hard candy, which is very susceptible to moisture gain. With something like that, you need really good barrier, uh, sorry, you need really good moisture barriers to help keep that stable for as long as its shelf life claim is. So hard candy has about a two-year shelf life. And in order to do that, you need something like a wax paper wrapper or a single-use plastic wrapper. Um, You really don't have recyclable or compostable materials available for this. So with Mori's coating, we're hoping that by better protecting these food items, we can then enable more sustainable forms of packaging. And you you mentioned hard candy. And I know when you look at your website, there are things like leafy greens or or avocados, or or I think I even saw noodles on there. Um, do do, Do you stay to specific market groups or are you always looking for new market groups? What, what range of products do you, do you work on? Yeah, so right now we're doing a lot of produce work. So like I mentioned, I'm specifically on the confectionery and snacking team, so mm-hmm. that's what I'll bring up a lot. Um, but we see major shelf life increases on foods like leafy greens, think like spinach or kale, um, whole produce items such as avocados, and yes, like you said, noodles, but specifically veggie noodles is something we've done a lot of work on. Um, and then where in the, the production process do you add your coating? Is it always to finished products or, or do you add it during processing? What does that step look like? Great question. So it's really market specific. Um, so we really work closely with the partners to determine the best way and time to apply. Um, but it really depends on what they're looking for and where the challenges are. And if you're working with a food where you're trying to stop it from drying out, uh, how, how do you understand this process? What methodologies or, or measurements are you using to investigate the water in those foods? Yeah, so a lot of what we look at if we're keeping something from drying out, for example, is looking at moisture loss. Um, so, you know, we have the capability of doing that in like an environmental chamber and using a scale, but it's really not as precise as it could be. So we've really benefited from using your VSA um, to look at shelf life stability over time, moisture loss over time. Um, in much more sensitive scales. And what does that VSA, the, the Vapor Sorption Analyzer, what's it give you? What, what uh, data are you able to collect with it and, and what's it show for your products? Yeah, so totally depends product to product. Um, but again, it's helpful to have really sensitive moisture loss or gain um, readings, water activity measurements, which can be indicative of where microbial growth could occur, for example. Um, it tells us It helps us identify different critical water activity points. And so for us, we're curious, can our silk coating help push that out, um, keep things stable for longer? And so you're you're using those uh, isotherms from the VSA. It kind of gives you a a complete moisture map of your products. And then are you also monitoring using water activity measurements? And, And why is that important to your team? Yeah, so water activity measurements is something we're definitely hoping to look more into in the future Mm -hmm. Um, but a good example of that is our coating can potentially alter like the degradation mechanism for different food items so just because the uncoated version fails at water activity x maybe we see different sensory attributes and a lesser degree of degradation for these same sensory attributes at that water activity with the silk coating so it helps us have a little bit more precision in defining our degradation than just, oh, it gained, you know, 5% moisture and looks like this or that. Mm-hmm. And what were some of the challenges that your team was facing before it had this moisture sorption isotherm technology? Really, the sensitivity, I would say, is the biggest thing. Like I said, you know, the thing that we were looking at most was just moisture gain or loss, you know, putting something in an environmental chamber and taking a weight reading. Um, But with that, you know, you have to remove it from the chamber, put it onto the scale. You can only read to a certain, um, you know, degree of precision. And so it's really just helped us be precise, be consistent, um, and really eliminate just a lot of environmental variables. 
Yeah, I think when you use a like an environmental chamber or an accelerated shelf life study, there, there's a lot of variables and a lot of steps where you can, even if you make a, a small mistake, it can really add up over time. And with the, the VSA, you know, you put your product in there and you it, it runs the test. You don't have to do anything and it creates that map for you. So I'm really happy to hear that that's been helpful to your team, especially for things like shelf life or identifying, you know, critical water activities and, and understanding your products. Um, besides Definitely. keeping... Besides keeping water in your foods, are, are you kind of working in the opposite direction as well? Maybe applying your coating to keep water out of certain foods or, or certain products? Definitely. So with a lot of the CPG items like hard candy, for example, or granola bars or things like that, they're the ones that are really susceptible to moisture gain and have these non-recyclable or compostable packaging systems. Um, and so that's what my team mostly focuses on. And you kind of touched on this briefly before, but what are some of the business impacts that you're seeing for your clients? You know, once they start using your coding, how quickly can they see a, a return on their investment? And what are some of the impacts that it has on their business? Yeah, so we really exist because of food waste. Um, almost 40% of food in this country is tossed. And so we really try to recapture that value to allow farmers, growers, processors to have more flexibility in their supply chains and distribution systems. Um, we're really allowing companies to reach new markets and develop new product categories. We make food more sustainable by removing the need for plastic packaging. So ultimately, we're trying to make the world a greener place, um, and this is seen immediately. As, as we move into 2022, uh, I know your team is growing rapidly. You know, you're already up to, to 60 plus employees. Uh, when I first talked to your team, you had purchased a, a vapor sorption analyzer, and, and now your team already has a, a second device. And I know that we work on projects together all the time. And so I'm wondering, as you start to build your team um, and look into the next year, what, what are some of your, maybe your personal, your team's goals, but also your, your company's goals as we move into next year? Yeah, so we're really looking to expand into new product spaces, but ultimately get some products out on the market. Um, so Mori's been around for three-ish years. Um, and we've made so much progress in that time frame and also have just really demonstrated the breadth of our, pro uh, of our product. Um, and so getting something on the market and really moving forward in that direction is what we're looking for. And if somebody is, is listening to this podcast and they are thinking, you know, a, a coding would be really helpful or I'm having trouble extending my shelf life or I'm having issues with microbial growth or I, I really need to keep oxygen um, out of my product, how can they get a hold of your team? What's, what's the best way to reach you? I would recommend going onto our website, so www.mori.com, um, and we have a contact page, and we're always looking for people to reach out with questions, new ideas, new products. And I, I also noticed uh, on your webpage, your, your team has won quite a bit of uh, awards recently. I, I was wondering if you just wanted to mention some of the things that um, your team has done and, and been awarded uh, recently. Thank you. Yeah, so this year alone, Mori was awarded as a technology partner by the World Economic Forum. Um, we've raised $16 million in Series B funding to approve the global food supply. And Canon also announced a manufacturing partnership with our company. Very exciting. That, that's awesome. I, I know I looked on your page and there's a, a whole <laughs> list of awards and, and things. So you guys are, are doing an awesome job. I'm really excited. I remember um, one of the first times when I got to do some testing on your products and look at those moisture sorption isotherms and it's it's really clear how your your product works to you know either keep water in or out to, depending on the product but uh using the isotherm you can see clearly what's going on and, and it's exciting to see a product like this that has these types of business impacts and help companies so i'm excited to see where your team goes and and also to continue working with you guys in the future thank you zachary yes as well well, thank you so much uh, for your time, Nadia, and, and for coming on to the show. I, I've been looking forward to having you on, so I'm, I'm glad we're able to get this recorded. <laughs> Me too. Thank you. I'm Zachary Cartwright. This is Water and Food. Find this podcast on Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.